I made my Joker mask part one. So we're starting with this base from Joanne Fabrics. It's a paper mask, so it's not waterproof, but it is pretty sturdy. The first thing we're gonna do is cut off the packaging and the elastic band on the back. I hate elastic bands on my masks. I like to use combs instead. So now that those are removed, we can see the base of the mask. So I'm gonna be putting it on my face and tracing the shape of Joker's mask with a pencil, just roughly, so I can get an idea of where everything needs to go. So you can see my rough lines here. I connected those into the shape of Joker's mask once I had it off my face, and then I cut it out. So here's the half of the mask that I did cut out. So I'm gonna be copying the pieces that I cut off to the other side of the mask so I can trace over those and have an exact mirror image on the other side to cut out. Here's the completed base of the mask, so you can see here are the parts I'm going to be whittling down with my knife, but I was pretty happy with the shape. If you're not, you can take off a little bit more, just make sure that you're mirroring it. Next, I'm going to be using Plastid It. Make sure you use this outside because it is toxic and rubber and it will get everywhere. I applied from about a foot away. You do several coats. This is going to make sure that the mask stays waterproof, and then you're going to let it dry for about a half hour. So here's the fully Plastid It mask. Now that we have the base mask completed, we can add the combs. So I use a pretty thin gauge wire, and I cut it to a length maybe of about a foot and a half. Next, you're going to want to bend it into the comb shape with pliers. And try to make sure that the sharp parts are both on one end so you can glue that facing away from your head so you don't accidentally hurt yourself. Finally, we're going to be adding these to the mask with hot glue. Hot glue works fine since these aren't going to be under a lot of stress, they're just to hold it into your hair. So I glue it, press them down, and then do another layer of glue on top. As you can see, I've rounded off the sharp ends. And then, one by one, I lift the tines of the comb up so they can catch into the wig. Alright, that's it for part one. Check my page for part two.